Why you mock me? Because uh, I'm allowed to. This is Sisters Reading Romance. Yeah. I am Lexi, one half of this podcast. I am Aisha, the other half of this podcast. She's a little menace. Yeah, and my cat is trying to knock shit She's Sabotaging around. us. Um, this week we did The Beast by Jenica Snow. Have we read anything else by her? I don't I think so. I could swear this name, like her... Her name me, is familiar, but let me. I'm just browsing her. I don't think I've read anything that she's. Her name just else. sounds like very familiar to me. Yeah. Maybe it, it comes up when you when in the all the um the monster romance recommendations. Maybe that's why. Oh, I have. I have read a book by Jenica Snow. Oh, you you have read one. And it was, I didn't finish it. Oh. Like, why didn't you finish it? Because it was weird. I was like, this is... Oh, okay. Yes. I would have been like, I could swear I read a book. Her Bear Clan series. I have read, I read the first one and I could not finish it. That makes sense. That makes it weird. I would have to go back and... But I didn't finish it. I like I remember reading it and being like, I can't finish this. Anyway, so reading The Beast by Jenica Snow. This Lexi picked. Uh, it like it comes up when I literally had it on my Kindle because I was in a monster romance phase. And I just never got around to reading it. And then I started on uh, Bookstagram and I saw someone was like Beauty and the Beast retelling. And I was like, wait a second. I have this on my Kindle. And then I suggested it to Aisha. It was quite short and Yeah, it's only 122 like, pages. Yeah. Like a novella length. It is a novella, for sure. This book I don't think we've picked, have we read any novellas on this podcast that have been complete hits? I didn't mind this one. Actually, Saint's Affair was technically a novella. That was a hit. But I didn't mind this. You, that's just because you picked it. You shit on all mine. I shit on all yours. But the thing is, this, is it wasn't, it I wasn't didn't. like about like the length. I think like the writing was like pretty good. I don't know. I didn't, I didn't hate it. Like I wouldn't say this was like. This a wasn't two. Scream for us level. <laughs> but this wasn't like anything more than a three out of five either. Oh. I just like, I don't know. Like it was so short. And then. See, just novellas just aren't for like, you shit. Unless not, they're not just novellas, like, just this one. I think novellas are just not for Aisha. I was okay with the uh, Scream for. You didn't question Scream for us, but this one. This is, I don't know. Like, I just wanted this to be more. Like, I wish this was a full length book. I mean, do you do you miss some of the sections that like you barely even get to be like with them? You barely get to get to know the characters before they're like, OK, we're in love. We're having babies. I just thought it jumped around really. Quick. I honestly did not mind the length. I didn't. I would like also consider this erotica. I didn't feel like I was missing out on sections of, like, the Beauty and the Beast retelling of it, though. I wish there was more. I mean, I wish mean, there's... I, like, you wish there was more, like, character development, like, obviously. And, like, to understand the characters, obviously. But I honestly, like, I didn't have a problem with how short it was and what we got out of it. Because... Yeah, is it's a good like it's if also you have really tropey. If you have For a, a book monster, that's one hundred and twenty two pages, it's super tropey. If you have a monster romance kick, this is a good, it's a good, good thing to scratch an itch. I guess really quick, you can sit down with it in like one sitting, and you're gonna be like done. Because like this was like paranormal fantasy. Fantasy, I guess, like I can I put fantasy, but 
I, I genuinely understand the world they lived in because, like, well, I mean, it's a novella, so it is a novella. I understand, but like, so this one was described like he lived in a castle and they lived in a village, like very oh. cla- like classic Beauty and the Beast, Be- classic Beauty and the Beast. But then when you get to the second one, which, like, the second, they're they, not related though, stand Well, then why are they in the same series? But if they don't live in the same world and don't label them in the same series. Just yeah, having but, two different monster romances that you've read that you wrote. Like, but they're they, part of a series of retellings, which is this. But same they as shouldn't Emily. be part of the same. Yeah, but hers at least has like a okay. These are all contemporaries. Where like this is like it, this could be like a fantasy. This could be historical. And then yeah, this, the this hunter, which is the second one, which is a red wedding, is a hood, contemporary. It's a contemporary, and it like takes place in modern day and like i think that like if if she had them both living in this like one world then i would i i think i'd like enjoy them as a whole all together but they're two separate worlds i just wish she didn't label them as like a sequel you know i mean they're she's doing a series of retellings so that makes sense to I me guess. um because yeah like fantasy Arranged marriage, um, monster romance, monster romance, novella, fairy uh, tale retelling, um, historical. Yeah, those are uh, like the shitty big dad. Ones. <laughs> okay, you know what I was thinking about this? That's like, that's just a fairy tale retelling. Parents suck. Like usually, it's a sh- some sort of shitty parent. Usually, your mom is dead, and your dad sucks. <laughs> Or the other way around. Or your dad's dead and your mom sucks like in Cinderella. Which is a stepmother, so technically. But, like, there's always some sort of bad parent. Like, the parent is just, like, absolute shit. Yeah, you shit. just and get shit on the parent lottery there. On, like, most fairy tale retellings have to do with, like, some parent with shit. Yeah. I was thinking about that. Um, oh, we didn't even do tropes for Hook. Yeah, we did. No, we didn't. Yeah, we could have talked about whether it was mafia or not. Oh, that it was only mafia. Okay. Um, trigger warning. I don't know. Um, is, this, is there a trigger warning on this? I mean, yeah, he like bites her, so I guess it's like blood. They also do the whole like primal play where he primal like chases play. her. Um, he murders an basically entire village of men. Um, Maybe not an entire village, but or like. like a lot of people. A lot of people. I can't think of any other trigger warnings. I mean, besides the fact that it's like a monster romance, so like obviously, if you're not into monster, if you're not romances, into then monster don't romance, read this. Which is true. It is a specific niche. A Some niche. people are weirded out by that. I'm not. I can Neither read, of us are. Can read anything and everything. Um, we should do an Ice Planet Barbarian. I feel like. But not the first one. Why? Because everyone does the first one. That's because it's the most controversial because it's got a rape scene in it. But I think we should do it. A- and a rape scene that's not with the heroine and the hero. But I think we should just do another one. Like I like the second one. I've heard so much about all the, the first one, but I haven't done The second anything. one's my favorite. Anyway, back to the beast. Um, this has to do a mix. This is a three and a half. This, I of- felt like that was high. 8,611 ratings. I thought that was high. Oh, that makes sense to me. Because I like... Because it, it means people this were rating also, this a four. This, yeah, I rated it this four. Really? This is, this is also like the flaw of... I mean, like, in your opinion, it's a flaw. I honestly think this is like a a decent rating. Like, I think that I believe this rating. Because, like, I would give it a 3.5. I wouldn't because like give this a th- and this is like a flaw on the Goodreads rating system is you I can't give them give half, half stars or you can't give quarter stars and I that's can, the flaw yeah. is like you either have to round up or you have to round down which is why you get like a rating that maybe you don't agree with but I I mean I think it's a 3.5 I don't think I think it's a I had a good time with this I had a good time with this book. You picked it. So you're I also a little biased. Was, I was also in like a schmood for it too. It was on my Kindle, so obviously I was in the schmood for it. I was not. I read this specifically because we picked it for the pod. Honestly, like 
maybe you should pick I a just month find that you pick all the books and then you will shit on all I don't shit on all your books your books have been like usually your books are hits this book just wasn't well a hit we were me. looking okay I I want to you fair, to know we look so fucking hard for a Beauty and the Beast retelling which sounds weird it which is really which is because it's like the most common it's retelling. the most common retelling but like it was like one that we that like was kind of different from the other ones we were reading and also was like not YA because Ayesha has beef with YA and I was it's like not... what about the beastly books and no, she I'm was not like that. absolutely I watched that movie and the movie wasn't even good I read the book there... when I was a teenager I just I thought we wouldn't have a hard time finding uh, Beauty and the Beast retelling because it's probably the, one of the most popular retellings. It's just all of them because I think it's just the flaw in Beauty and the Beast. Like I look, I don't quite enjoy the story of Beauty and the Beast because there's only so much you can deviate from yeah. the retelling. And the retelling is like he's a prince, he got cursed. Like the, she gets locked in a castle because her dad makes poor decisions, and then and they fall in love. They fall in love because of Stockholm syndrome. So, like, I guess that's true. Like, you can only... And we were looking for a retelling that also, like, we when we read it, we were like, yeah, this sounds good. Like, we we would we had found a bunch of retellings and couldn't quite seem the, to, like... The back of the books didn't, like, draw us in. Also, the thing with, with Beauty and the Beast is, like, a lot of people could argue that Beauty and the Beast retellings or Hades and Persephone retellings That's because basically true. it is Hades, the Hades and Persephone story where he like like in the myth the, the original myth he like kidnaps her and then because isn't it, but that would be similar to what we talked about last pod last episode with um, Lion King being being Macbeth. a Macbeth but like everyone knows that the Lion King because the Lion King came from a musical and the musical Came from Macbeth. Came from Macbeth. It's a more digestible version of Macbeth. Yeah, Macbeth because Shakespeare is very confusing to people. Yeah, I mean, this wasn't a bad retelling. The so this is dual POV, and I you think do spend more time with Belle than you yeah. do with Beast. The only actually because well, he masturbates in every yeah, <laughs> and like it sounds like a lot, like. A lot. Okay, of I cum. want you guys. Like, to, okay, we should we talk read, about the wait, amount of read, cum? Okay, should we read the back of the book? Okay, read the back of the book and let's circle back to the amount of cum that's right. in this. This back of the book. What if the beast never turned into the prince? My father had just sold me off, bartered my body to erase his debt to, to the very devil himself, a beast of a man, literally, a creature whispered about amongst the villagers and feared by all he was a beastly visage 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 that's how i'd say it in my head anyway at three times the size of a man and a monstrous huge body covered in fur sharp fangs and eyes that held an unearthly red glow he had paw-like hands tipped with claws and horns that arced back from his inhuman head. I was to live with him and be his in every way, all ways he saw fit. I was to be his wife, and so I was offered so and so I offered myself up as a peripheral sacrifice to the very devil himself. I just didn't expect to enjoy being with a monster as much as I did. I mean, that's a pretty accurate pretty description. Accurate. I like how that she just literally describes how the beast looks. <laughs> and to be fair, she kept the the she kept him looking like how he did in the cartoon. In the cartoon, yeah, exactly yeah. like in the Disney version. So, except Belle but is that's all- described as like quote unquote like curvy, like yeah, she's quote described unquote, as plus size. Uh, yes, like or like not. I wouldn't like. Not I wouldn't skinny. know if I say yeah. We don't know if I'd say plus size, but just like she's got a little bit a more normal meat. human. Yeah, she's got a little bit more meat in her bones than the than the little skinny little models that like cartoons yeah. and modern television feed us. But I mean, okay, I, so it's Belle, obviously. Yes, and Beast. 
why the fuck this is this is well i'm okay with this me like was skipping up for a little bit why the fuck does he not have a name like that was my least favorite part was the fact that he name in in the cartoon he like goes by his like once he turns back he goes by his prince name but he doesn't but he he eventually tells but they, her okay but the, the that's getting into the like obviously if this was because he like, tells her his name there's no lore in this book like they never re- they, they never really explain like why he's, he's a even beast, a beast but why he lives in a castle and why he no there's like, no backstory to there's him no at backstory all. at all he Besides was he was fact- never cursed like they never really get into the portion of the store of beauty I don't and the think beast he is cursed with like the rose and the curse and the how he offended some he's witch. Just legit no, a he's beast. He's just a beast, which is like fine. But how did he get all his money? Why is yeah? He so I didn't rich? understand the logic of the village of how he was like because it the the duke or the lord of this village. Yes, but he's like a, a beast because it made sense in the original retelling and the original fairy tale because he was the prince. So, which is why he had the castle and he was, like, the lord of the the area. And then he was cursed versus, like, there was no explanation. He was just, like, a beast I that mean, lived in a castle close by who just, like, had a lot of let money. Your, your, your level of disbelief just go in this one. I just didn't like that he never had a fucking name. Like, the, it was just, like, she literally just, like, called even... Called him Beast. Called him Beast. Maybe he likes... Maybe that's Does he refer to him. himself in his head as Beast? Um, I don't know. Did he refer to himself as third person in his head? I don't no, remember. No, but like when he introduces himself, does he just say, hi, I'm Beast? No, I think he just assumed she knew his, he was the Beast and he never introduced his name. I just, I just thought that was odd. That was my least favorite part of the fact that he never actually had a name and it wasn't like, I thought what was going to happen was that they, she would eventually get like, They'd fall in love, and then he'd be like, my name is this. And then she'd stop calling him Beast and, like, actually call him his name. But he just lets people call him Beast for the sake of, like, fuck you guys, I don't care. But he just doesn't legit have a name. He's just Beast. Well, she doesn't even know the names of anyone fucking working in the castle. That's true. She also just, like, didn't even care to know. She was kind of like, oh, I forgot their names already. So we just she just called them by their... Their professions. Yeah, so... Chef and... Yeah, it was, like, cook and uh like butler and no they they the 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 the, the, the candlestick dude from is it yeah the candlestick dude from the cartoon he has a name yeah but everyone else doesn't. everyone else, no one else has a name besides it's not mrs potts is it no she calls her something else i wish she should have just called her mrs potts to stick with the story stick with the story um but basically what happens in this book is Belle's dad has a gambling addiction and basically just gambles away all their fucking money. All her money. All of... She makes the money. And he- literally all of their stuff. Like he puts... Because he runs out of money to gamble, he starts gambling at the house and like the land and he ends up in a lot of debt. And then Beast... The Beast knew this. And is like... And he's been obsessed with her since he for saw a while. her. So he was like, wow, this sounds like a great opportunity to get what I want. And they never addressed this. They never addressed the fact that, like, he manipulated this situation Although in order to get he did to admit her. it to her, and she was kind of like, okay. I mean, she was be- stuck between a rock and a hard place. Like, Because, y- like, basically, s- he then swoops in and says, if you pay me, in, like, by giving me your daughter, like, pay me by giving, they, I want to marry your daughter – like you marry her off to me, I will settle all your debts. And, then and he, he's like, okay. And he fucks that over, like. <laughs> so, then he, so then he sends her. Basically, she he signs the papers because of, of the, this is like historical. So in this day and age, your father signs all the papers. Mm-hmm. So he basically just signs all the marriage documents. So she's basically legally his wife, and then ships her to the castle. And she just shows up like, hello. <laughs> And then they kind of just like dance around each other, and it, it does follow the Beauty and the Beast story where she is forced to have dinner with him. Yeah. And the first scene where he's eating like an animal because he's a beast, and she starts to laugh. I don't know if that's what it's like in the original. I don't think that's. What I don't it's remember. Like. I think she gets mad because he doesn't act like a, like civilized. 
But it's also like, who is she to tell this like beast beast how he should eat? Because like, who's to say that this is the proper way to eat just because you eat this way? Yeah, I thought that was a weird scene to be honest. It's like asking your like I don't want to co- like compare him to a dog because obviously he has like an individual thinking. Yeah, he has a higher intelligence, so it's a little. But like, different. it's like asking your dog to eat with like a fork and knife, like. Why would you do that? I guess so. So then, basically... I understand if you're stuck in this situation, you have to share a dinner table with this, like, human-sized beast animal yeah. person. You're going to be like, um, why? Like, and the the amount of food he feeds her is absolutely ridiculous. Because yeah. he feeds her, like, full chickens. And she was like, She's like, oh. Where's the vegetable? <laughs> and like they basically just like start to fall in love and you don't really see no, don't much of it they start it I don't is think very stockholm fall, syndrome fall in love i think it's like she so he's been like already in love with her because he's been obsessed with her forever but she like when she first gets there obviously she's scared of him because like Naturally. she's never and, really like met him or encountered him before and he's huge and it's just her coming to the realization that, like, you know, she doesn't actually really mind how he looks. It was just the initial, like, fear and shock of the situation she Basically, was in. Basically, when she realizes he's not just, like, a mindless animal, she's like, okay, he's, like, kind of like a person who just looks different. Yeah. Basically. And they basically just, like, yeah, dance around each other. And then eventually her dad sends word that he's in debt again and wants help. And she's like, it's the only family got left. And then and it's actually an ambush where they were hoping to kill Beast. And then basically what I understood was that if they killed the Beast and she was married to him, she would then inherit all of his stuff. And then her dad would be able to just fuck around with all of the stuff. Yeah, that's probably his, her dad's plan. And then Gaston was going to be like, I killed the Beast. Yeah, and like, probably try to marry Belle to get probably. all the stuff. Yeah. That makes sense. So it's an ambush. Gaston's like still the bad guy. And the beast fucks everyone up. Including her dad. Yeah. No, he doesn't fuck her. He's I'm like pretty sure. He's like, if you do not get out of my face in like five seconds, I'm going to murder you. And don't come back. In front of your daughter. And, and he, he scurries off. He scurries off like a little chicken and she is kind of like okay so this is just a thing and just like accepts it and then they have sex the first time in the middle of the forest in the the dirt primal play where he basically ruts her like an alleged animal and then Mm -hmm. carries her home yeah and then the epilogue is they have a baby coming yeah, so she's Which is, pregos. Because it's never explained what he actually is, that was just a weird that was just a weird thing to me. Like I wanna know what those kids are gonna look like. Yeah, because I, I was like I didn't know what he actually was. So I was like confused as to how she was going to have a child. Yeah. Cause like it, I, I think we're like for me it's like I always compare it to how like the discussion in morning glory milking farm where she discusses with like about the town and like hybrids living in that town and like Rourke's one of his I think it was his grandmother was like like half something like yeah she was like half human and half minotaur or something like that and it was like explained that this is like very it's like a common thing and it can happen like obviously it's like complications with the pregnancy and it'll be like probably like a high risk thing in particular for her but it's like explained like they they do discuss it and they do and they discuss that you can like basically go and there's like a procedure or like a pill or something that makes you like fertile to another race basically in yeah. this case and like it's explained how that works so like I just yeah like I wasn't quite sure how that was like a thing I mean, it's a novella. They, they, they I guess. They I guess, like, I, I realize you got to suspend belief because it is a novella, but that was one thing that I was like, 
okay. I just wish I knew what he was. So that, like, even if it was, like, a very brief, like, oh, like, I heard a rumor that he came from blah, even if it's never confirmed, you kind of are like, okay, this makes sense. But they just because, explained like, to him as, like, he was cursed and then... That's just like, and then he just never broke the curse. Except that it's explained that he's like not cursed. He's just like a fucking beast. Like he's just yeah. a, like an other. Yeah. Like something that's not human, but I mean, not obviously close enough to human to have children. I understand that you want a little bit more explanation in this book, but I went into this knowing it was a novella. I was not expecting like a whole lore backstory. I wasn't expecting the pregnancy at the end. I mean, in the contract, it did say he wanted heirs. Yeah, but I, I don't know. So I, I was like, 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 yeah, because he wants to fuck. He, he wants to fuck her, and that's the only way to get get it in. Can we, okay, get it in, get the child in there? <laughs> God. Can we talk about the size of his dick? The weird, <laughs> constant masturbation. Dude, and he was, like, constantly mad. And it was, like, Every time he saw her, like, she'd be walking outside, and he'd be like, I'm just going to rub one out. It. And then he would just like, the, my thought was he also, after he masturbates, he, like they would just be like come everywhere. Yes. And I'm like those poor, like cleaning people who have to <laughs> clean up all the semen everywhere. There literally is a scene where he's like watching her outside and she's like feeding the birds in the garden and he's in the window, just like pumps one out, comes on the floor and then just leaves it and leaves it. And he, he even in his mind says, fuck it, I'll leave it. And just literally like there's a, like he actually the book states that he knows there's cum on the floor and he leaves it anyway. Like, <laughs> so I feel weird. so bad for these employees in this house because they have to clean up all his and cum. he made it seem like it was like on the floor, on, on the, the wall. wall, like it didn't just- like it's <laughs> everywhere. Like, oh, my God, it I would be weird. like, I need a raise. If I saw weird. that, I it would be weird. like, I do not get paid. But he also shit. stated that the servants never go in his ward. So he just so leaves like he just dried leaves cum dried everywhere. <laughs> like it, it, instead of a, a cum sock, he is like a cum corner. Uh, yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Ew. And he ha- his like pre-cum isn't like just little dribbles it's like like a just a, yeah like it's, it's just, like a dripping faucet it's, just, it's like, just it's not even like a dripping faucet it's just a faucet that's on imagine turning the faucet on halfway like he had a knot and then, right i remember him he had yeah a they did, yeah. did nodding in this too that should be a trope because that's yeah. a thing but he like yeah so it's basically like his pre-cum is like the faucet turned halfway so it's like a steady stream and then him actually coming is like full blast but like it's like like just it was a lot of cum like a a cum there you go that that's another trope like a cum kink is that a thing that's a a thing (laughs) a cum fetish is that what it's called i don't know i don't know i remember i literally just read one read a book where she talks about how she like really liked to become on and that was like she didn't realize that was a fetish until she started I mean, the thing is, is that, like, I don't quite think this is, like, meant to be fetishy. Like, I think it's supposed to be a a part of the monster aspect. I just want you guys to know they describe his dick as, like, the length of her forearm. And I... Like a Pringle can. I... And it was, like, yeah, a Pringle can. And basically, I was, like, how... Where does it go? Like, when it goes in her... Where does it go? It, there's no way it all be able to go in because also. But the first time they have sex, but in order to get the knot in, he would have to get all the way. I think to the base. knot was halfway. I think they said it was halfway. The knot was halfway. But the other thing is, is that the first time they have sex is literally on the forest floor in the middle of the fucking yeah. night. And then she, he bites her, so she's covered in blood as well. And then she comes. And she had a Pringle can shoved up her for the first time she had sex. I just can't picture how that would be not painful. A good time at all. And just it would just be ramming into her cervix, man. That just doesn't sound like a good time at all. Yeah. I mean, although like sometimes it's like a thing. If you like a little like pain with your pleasure, like some I people think that like was that. part of it. Like she did like But But the first time Yeah. 
Because I kept thinking they were going to have sex beforehand Mm -hmm. and still have sex after that, like still have that scene. But their first time would be like at the castle. But no, there's just a like new that it is. She just met. She jacks him off in the bathtub. Yeah, she doesn't. He doesn't touch her. I don't don't think so. Yeah. Okay. so there's like where he there's like a hand job scene. Yeah. Which is a good scene. It's a good scene. But then that's all there is. And then they just have sex covered in blood after murdering like 20 people in the forest. It's her kink. She loves she loves a good murderous man who who, who defends her. I guess so. And I just jacks her up. <laughs> yeah. That the, the the amount of cum in this it's was a like a cum. lot. It's a lot of cum. It was a and lot. It, like the thing is at the end when they were like oh there's like a, a like a kid on the way i'd be like well that makes sense he like fucking has like waterfalls that come out of everywhere i also i i totally forgot about because in i pretty sure i highlighted that that scene in my kindle that where he was like just left the cum on the floor and i remember like highlighting it being like what the fuck <laughs> And I did. I totally forgot about it until you said it. And I was like, "You're right. That was a really fucked up, weird thing that he just like has a cup quarter." He also in his like room. basically breaks the window because he's like coming so hard that his claws go in. Yeah, and she like hears it, but, but can't, she can't like see in see where the so she hears this like cracking of the window. Yeah. It, is, it was really intense. It's intense, but you know what? I have a bad time. I have a bad time with it. Quarter. <laughs> okay, and you shit on scream for us. And then scream for her. She had no quarter. self-preservation. I had more issue with the fact that she had no self-preservation. Belle also doesn't have any. She's just kind of like she's there for a week, and she's like, "I'm in love," and I was like. No, she said she was falling for him. She didn't. We also didn't don't get many sex. scenes of them actually together. Like the only, yeah, the only all you we get, get is like, so you get their dinner, their first dinner, and then yeah. she says they have dinners every week after that, and he tries to be civil, and then the scene in the library, and then the bathtub scene, and then his solo come scene. In the yeah, come te- I mean technically that's them together. Uh, and then and then they leave for the battle. Yeah, thing. and then when they're on the horse, because there's a little bit of that chapter before they get get to the battle. The yeah, it's not. Uh, yeah, this is a very long book. I mean, okay, what's your? We you know my my. Let's go least favorite part first. So my least favorite part was the fact that he never fucking had a name. I just thought that was so weird that he literally was just beast. Like because it was never explained what he was, there was just like he wasn't a person. He was, he was, but he. His name was what he was. That's yeah. like saying human. Oh, my name's human. It was. I thought that was weird. What's your least favorite part? Um, probably just like I wanted more scenes of them together. Like, yeah, it would have made it it more believable. Even if they just had like if they had a couple more like pages of just them having dinner together and like having like conversation, casual conversation. Yeah, I could have done without the weird masturbation scene through the window to be honest there's also a scene at the very beginning when he's following her around and he and basically he do- masturbates he like does masturbate in the me. alley yeah <laughs> he's just and, leaving cum everywhere and just comes on just he just straight up comes on the floor outside i thought he came in his pants no he tucks it back in and just oh. like continues on his way <laughs> He's, he's just leaving, oh like, semen piles everywhere, man. I just imagine that just being so gross. But, my okay, what's your favorite part? I love the good dirty talk. Yeah, there was a lot of that. In I, particular, the bathtub scene. I was... Uh, my favorite part was probably this the forest sex scene. But if I was to suspend belief for the fact that it was her first time and he was literally his dick was a pringle can then it was a good scene like without those two things it was like the favorite part of the book but those two things aside <laughs> yeah but i did i like the bathtub scene a little bit more that was a good scene there was really good there was good sex scenes in this um i don't know i don't think i'd reread this would you um, reread this i mean it took me like an hour and a half um, if I couldn't find another, like, I was in, like, a monster romance mood, 
and I couldn't find anything else that was like quick and like dirty, I guess. If I was in a monster mood and I was looking for something quick, I'd be reading one of the barista I guess. books from with from Chloe Evans. We should do those. Those would be good. We should do like a month of like some of those. But we keep just suggesting different months and we're never gonna get to them. We will we, we will. There's lots of months to come. But um I don't know if I I don't I don't think I'd reread this. Maybe. I think it's a maybe pile for a reread. I didn't have a bad time with it. This is Kindle Limited though. So it is like Kindle Limited. It's very short. It's Um Your rating was a four? I rated it a four on Goodreads, but I'd probably give it a three point five. Okay. I th- yeah. I gave this a three. Um I don't know if I'd quite go a three point five. I I think this is a solid three for me. Um, steaminess. I mean, if you're if you have a comp fetish, this is so steamy. I listed this as a three, but thinking about it now, relative to like if you look at every scene in the book, relative to the fact that like what eighty percent are sex scenes, mm-hmm. or like I would say sixty percent. I would I would say between seventy and eighty because the first the first scene with Beast he masturbates in the alley. Mm-hmm. Second scene is Belle with her dad and him being like, "Yeah, I'm marrying you off," basically. Mm-hmm. And then, then it's the dinner scene. Mm-hmm. And then after that, it's like sexual tension in the library. Mm-hmm. And then it's his masturbation scene in the window. Yes, and then it's the cum the, corner, and then it's yeah the cum corner, and then it's the bathtub scene with her jacking him off. Yes, and then it's her them on the horse and her getting horny. Yes, and then it's the battle scene, yes. and then it's the big sex scene. Yes, so like, I would say sixty to seventy percent of these are sex scenes. What do you think it would be? Would you still say three? I don't know. I, was, I was... or would you say four? Like I wouldn't say this is a five. But like, um, I would say this is a four. I had I was thinking four. I would say this is a four because for a novella for for 122 pages, this has a lot of sex in it or sex, sexual content. Yes, yeah. There we go. That's a good. That's a good way to put it. Would I recommend this? No, I no. Wouldn't. I would never. I don't think I. This is this is not even entry level monster romance. So the reason we added the least favorite part and favorite part section to all of the the episodes moving forward is so that we don't like, we don't want to shit on books. Like we don't want to hate on books. So we always want to talk about one good thing on top of one bad thing, but I don't think I'd recommend this to anybody. (laughs) It's a very neat, but the thing is like, this is like monster romance to the extreme. You know what I mean? So like, would I recommend this to someone who is like looking for a short monster romance and they've already dipped their toe into monster romance i'd be like yeah i'd be like yeah you know what i had like a decent time in this and it's really quick and it'll like you'll finish it in like an hour or so in an hour and a half and but like if this is like someone who's like i kind of want to dip my toe in monster romance i would probably n- not for, recommend this one as for something first. that's so tropey this isn't that indicative of the genre like of the monster romance like of that sub genre like trope this isn't like a good one to start with if you're yeah. looking for that it also i think you have to be quite into monster romance slash omega verse because some people do not know what nodding is and some and people like, don't like it yeah i didn't realize like both of us read Omegaverse quite often, quite and we often. both really enjoy it. But there are people out there who really dislike it. Yeah. Which is so weird to me, because, like, I don't know. I've never thought it was that weird. There's a lot of weirder things I to think, read. I think I would have more, not with the nodding, but, like, more beef with just the, like... Of a Omega thing? Like, the, the way your body just, like... Oh, You reacts. have no control of your body in some aspects of it. Like, heats and stuff. The heats and, like, how you react to... Li- how Omegas react to Alphas and stuff like that. Like, I think I would have more of an issue with that. Because that, like, obviously, in, 
in Omegaverse that does come into play of like a huge that's a huge part of Omegaverse but like and I that's that part of Omegaverse I would understand people having beef with uh but the nodding is just like I think but it's because it's, it's so... like an anim- it's it's a thing animals do like dogs not ducks not like, yeah I think that's the problem it's the animal part of I don't know I mean but it's just like a not when they describe Omegaverse it's like non-shifter like animal like ish. animal designations even though technically yeah. there's no alpha beta and omega designations within animal Besides worlds wolves. this they actually have uh proven that that study is absolute bullshit because they studied animals and kept wolves in captivity not wolves in the wild and that was just an aspect of those wolves in the captivity not what wolves in the wild because wolves in the wild go basically with like a family system so like the head of the family the quote unquote the alpha is like the patriarch the, fa- the like the father and then it kind of like it's kind of more like how wolf song was we're getting so sidetracked Very but it's sidetracked. like how wolf, wolf song his dad was the patriarch and then he knew that like he needed to like when joe was born that he was going to be the next like the next leader of the family it had nothing to do with like how many alpha vibes they had (laughs) (laughs) like you know what i mean because like that that happens in omega verse all the time it's like oh he's like he's more alpha than yeah he has more alpha vibes or like whatever here at the Sisters Bidding Romance and like podcast, in, we go off alpha vibes and cum corners. <laughs> That's all we got here. If you don't have a cum slog, you have a cum corner. <laughs> I can't get over that. <laughs> Fuck. But anyway, we're sidetracked into the Omegaverse. <laughs> Maybe we'll eventually get an Omegaverse on this podcast. I, I like Omegaverse ones. I just find that they're But very like, niche. yes, nodding is, is in this and yeah. some people might not like it. Not Might not like it. Um, on that note, is there any last words? Don't believe it, Yisha. I had a really good time with this book. I did not have a good it's time. It's a fun time. Like, like, don't go into it expecting, like, like... It is a novella, so you have like, to go into don't it expecting... Go, yeah, like, don't go expe- into it expecting some, like, huge world-building lore where it's, like, so deep and, like, every little thing has a meaning to it. It's a novella. It's fun just if you want to read something that's fun quick and really dirty that's literally fun quick and dirty i think you'd have a good time with this don't read the second one though i did not have a good time with this i haven't finished it but um i don't have anything else to add i think i've said my piece um as usual guys please rate review subscribe it helps us so much tell your friends connect with us on instagram that's like usually where we are um, and send us book recs because we've been picking other books, but uh, I'd be curious what you guys want to hear us talk about. Um, otherwise, that's all for this week. So we'll see you next week. Well, Cinderella retelling is next week. Um, on that note, we'll be in your ears next week. Bye. Bye.